My name is Hubert Millet. I was born in France, in Paris, a uh, long time ago, before the Second World War. <laughs> that makes me pretty old. Uh, I've lived uh, in uh, France, of course. I've lived in England. And I've lived in the US um, at different stages of my life. And now I live in uh, California having been first uh, on the East Coast for a certain amount of years. Then uh, I moved here uh, eight, nine years ago. And I like it very much, especially the weather <laughs> and the uh, sort of atmosphere which uh, is in California, which always been a, a state, you know, moving forward and going faster than the other states in America. Hubert Millet was born in Paris, France, on March 2, 1936, to parents Philip and Jackie Millet. Hubert is the oldest of seven children, with five brothers and one sister. He had a close relationship with all of his siblings throughout his life, four of which have since passed away. Both of his surviving siblings, Bruce and Patrick, live in England. He is closest with and keeps in touch with Patrick often. Hubert was raised during a time when there were many different political and social changes occurring which impacted his life. One memory that has forever impacted Hubert's life was when the Nazis invaded France and his family had to flee to the mountains of France to hide since his family was part of the resistance. During this period of time, he recalls seeing Gestapos patrolling the streets with dogs. As discussed in lecture, this would be an example of a non-normative life event as this unusual occurrence has had a major impact on Hubert's life. He remembers this time of great stress, and what really stood out to him was when the Allies finally landed in France and drove through the streets in large GMC trucks, passing out candies to all of the children. He was around eight years old at this point, and remembers taking so much candy from them since they hadn't had this kind of luxury since the Germans invaded. Hubert's recollection of this is an example of episodic memory, as he displayed the retention of information about the details of life's happenings. In the 1950s, Hubert's family moved to the southwest of France along the Pyrenees River once the political climate had cooled down. He then went on to attend boarding school in the small town of Fontainebleau at College de Carmes de Avon. The school was a very prestigious all-boys school with only about 150 students. While discussing his time at boarding school, Hubert mentioned that there was a movie created called Goodbye Children, which depicted events that had happened before he was a student there. The priest of the school was providing shelter for young Jewish boys in order for them to be protected from the Holocaust. Moving into emerging adulthood, Hubert had many different careers and was able to travel the world quite a bit. He went on to get his degree in business at the University of Paris and was then on the hunt for a job. Before being able to join the workforce, France went to war with Algeria, which was a French colony. Due to Hubert's age at the time, he was drafted into the French military. His college degree got him put into an accelerated cadet training program, and after about three to four months, he was an officer. He describes the war as being exactly like the one in Vietnam. He spent his time patrolling and facing different riots in the cities. When returning to France, Hubert had an easy time readjusting to normal life he was eventually able to find his first job in his field. Hubert's first real job was as the assistant assistant manager to the assistant manager of a company called Dunlop, which was a British company. His next job was in finance with a company that dealt with foreign cars, Ferrari, Bentley, Rolls-Royce, etc. He worked for them for about two to three years when he was around 27 or 28. One of Hubert's favorite memories while working for this company was the time that he was able to sell a car to Bridget Bardot. In 1968, Hubert describes being part of a social movement that took place in Paris. The protests continued for two weeks straight and included about 22% of France's total population. It began with unrest among a series of student occupation protests against consumerism, capitalism, and traditional institutions, values, and order, which eventually spread. Police and administrative intervention only sparked a larger fire, which led to it being the largest strike in France's history. 
Hubert remembers rioters using cobblestones in the street as shelter from the retaliation of the police, and the protests were often violent and very intense. After working for the car company for a couple of years, Hubert was recruited by British American Tobacco to be the financial controller, which is his first big job in the industry. His position was stationed in France, and he was overseeing all of Europe. During this time, he was able to travel to America for the first time, where he would stay in New York for three to four weeks at a time in a company-owned apartment that was stocked with a butler and many maids. A headhunter recruited Hubert, which took him to his next step in his career. He began working for a liquor company as the executive vice president and after a few years became the CEO of Cointro. During his time with this company, Hubert met his current wife Karen at a cocktail party being hosted by his company for a famous artist in New York City. Hubert describes wooing her by calling her at work and asking for her to return his call by contacting the French embassy in Washington, D.C., where he was visiting his uncle, the French ambassador. Hubert's plan worked, and he eventually married Karen on May 22, 1985. Once they were married, they moved to Paris and lived in a flat on the Seine River across from Notre Dame. According to Sandrock, the longer someone is married, the closer their relationship functions on the basis of affectionate love, or when an individual desires to have the other person near and has a deep, caring affection for the other person. Due to his career, Huber was traveling quite a bit and was lucky enough to bring Karen with him. Social life was a very important aspect in keeping strong relationships with his clients, and Karen was able to help him with that in entertaining the clients' wives and organizing social outings in different locations. Hubert and Karen made a very good team when it came to his career. In 1989, Hubert was once again recruited by another company, Seagram's, and became the CEO and president of the International Division, which was a very time-consuming job. His position was based out of Europe. He had control and responsibility to make sure that the marketing was correct and that products were being sold all over Europe. This large and important job meant that Hubert was working 115% of the time, even on Sundays. In 1991, Karen and Hubert flew to Texas and adopted their first daughter, Julie. In 1995, they had their first biological child, Luis, when Hubert was 60 years old. Shortly after that, in 1998, they had twins, Alex and Edward, all of their children were born while they were still living in Paris, and Hubert was working full-time. Hubert recalls having a difficult time balancing his work and personal lives, and in 1998, they moved to America. In 2001, Hubert was able to retire. However, he kept busy as a French diplomat and was sitting on the board of multiple companies. He recalls planning his retirement quite a bit, and he was mentally very ready for retirement. According to Santrock, older adults who adjust best to retirement are healthy, have adequate income, are active, are better educated, have an extended social network of friends and family, and are satisfied with their lives before they retired. Hubert was able to stay very active in sports and his golf game increased and improved during his retirement. The activity theory states that the more active and involved older adults are, the more likely they are to be satisfied with their lives. One of the best things that retirement brought him was time. Hubert described being happy that he had his children at a later age because he was able to retire and spend much more time with them since he had gotten his work out of the way earlier. During his retirement, Hubert became a part of the Keepers of the Quake, which is a semi-secret society that you may only join if invited. You don't choose it, it chooses you. Being inducted as a keeper is recognition of an outstanding contribution to the Scotch whiskey industry for at least five years. And anyone, anywhere, in any manner or role within the industry can be nominated to join, as long as they're worthy. There are now more than 2,500 keepers and 150 masters of the quake. Those are the individuals who have at least 10 years of service as a keeper, and they all hail from all over the world. This was a strong social support for Hubert in that he retired from the workforce, yet was able to still have social support from individuals who have had similar experiences and interests as him. While being a part of this social group, he was able to meet Prince Charles at a dinner meeting, which is a fond and fun memory for him in post-retirement. Hubert looks back on his life and is able to recognize that his accomplishments are very impressive, and he is able to enjoy all that he has been through. This highlights Erickson's final stage of development, integrity versus despair. Hubert shows significant signs of the integrity part of Erickson's theory as he is able to piece together a positive review of his life. Overall, his outlook on life is very positive, and he is so proud of his children and his career. When asked if Hubert had any advice for those that are younger than him, he said that it is crucial to stay focused and be very passionate about what you do, and the most important thing is to never give up.
Yeah, I think it's, it's extremely important in life to be passionate about what you're doing. <clears throat> I mean, passion is important. And if you want really to succeed and you want to do something, keep at it, keep at it, be focused. Be focused all the time on what you want to do. And even if it's very hard, never give up. Never give up.